Okay, let's fucking do it. Can you tell when someone is lying to you? Despite the immense importance of this skill, the evidence suggests we're actually really bad at distinguishing truths from lies. And it got me thinking, what role can brain scanning and brain imaging play in helping to spot a liar? So just how bad are we at spotting a liar? The answer is very, very bad. This study collected a giant pool of 24,000 individuals asked to distinguish 6,000 different truthful or deceptive sentences from 4,000 different people. There are issues with studies like this. The type of lie wasn't consistent, let alone the delivery of the lie itself. But the general trend is clear. People correctly identified lies 47% of the time and correctly identified truths 61% of the time, creating an average general accuracy of 54%. So... Not really any different to pure chance. Let's try it. Which of the following statements are complete lies and which are true? I have twin sisters that are two years younger than me and I'm very close with both of them. I love the musical Hamilton and I know all of the words off by heart. I was an extra in the Harry Potter films cast as a Ravenclaw called Anthony Goldstein. Did I lie to you just before? I did. Only the Hamilton thing is actually true. Hashtag. I'm not throwing away my socks. <laughs> if you got the answer right, maybe you should consider applying for the BBC television programme, The Traitors. If you haven't seen it, you should, it's awesome. Hosted by Claudia Winkleman, this show gathers 22 strangers in a castle in the Scottish Highlands. The majority of the people on the programme are cast as faithfuls, and a few of them are cast as traitors. Every night, the traitors must murder someone kicking them out of the game. The traitors just spend all day every day lying to everyone, repeatedly promising that they're faithfuls. Every day the contestants try to guess who the traitors are and then banish someone out of the game. The faithfuls can win £100,000 if they vote out all of the traitors, whilst the traitors win the money if they deceive everyone and never get voted out. Whether you've seen this insanely entertaining show or not, a key thing that it highlights is just how bad we are at detecting liars. The traitors spend all day, every day, just lying to everyone, but nobody can really tell who they are. The idea that certain people, like detectives and psychologists, are any better at this than anyone else is not well established in the literature either. Could an fMRI brain scan help to catch a traitor? What's even the theory around how MRI machines may even be helpful? Let's get into it. Lying is a complex behavior involving imagination, planning, memory, decision-making, and changing emotions. This involves areas of the brain such as the prefrontal cortex, amygdala, and insula. When you lie, these areas of the brain have to start working a bit harder. But what does working a bit harder mean? If we zoom in on the prefrontal cortex, you can see there are all of these neurons sending signals. Working harder means more signals are being sent. Sending more signals requires more energy. This need for more energy is met by more oxygen-rich blood flowing to these neurons to deliver oxygen to be used in respiration to produce energy. So we have a situation where blood flow in the brain is likely to be changing as a person tells a lie. Our eyes can't see this change in blood flow, but an MRI machine can. Functional MRI involves taking lots of pictures of the brain across a period of time that can show where oxygen-rich blood has traveled to in the brain. More oxygen-rich blood traveling to areas like the prefrontal cortex could indicate the person is lying. But, what do the studies actually show? fMRI brain scans on detecting deception are actually a bit tricky because you can't talk whilst having your brain scanned because it ruins the data. So the deception usually involves questions being presented on a screen to which the participants give a button press answer, a yes or a no, which is either truthful or not. They do this whilst on their back in a narrow tube that makes loads of noise. So let's just acknowledge that this is not the most comparable thing to lying out in the real world. And there's the same issue that participants and members of the public are not criminals. But 
it's an approximation. The person still undergoes some of the neurological changes necessary to lie. Researchers then look at different areas of the brain, like the prefrontal cortex, and see if there's increased activity during certain answers for that particular area. The answers, the button presses, with the higher activity in the prefrontal cortex were predicted to be the times when the person was lying. And the results were really cool. This paper looked at 26 participants and concluded that lies could be distinguished from truths 78% of the time. This paper, looking at 14 people, found similar results with an accuracy of 71%. Note that these aren't huge studies on thousands of people, which is what they would need to generate the reliability required by a court of law, or for a housemate who promises that they didn't have the last chamomile tea. And this high accuracy is just for someone pressing buttons, not engaging in the vastly more complex language and storytelling required for someone lying in complete sentences. But a big downside is there weren't any uniform brain areas that had increased activity across every single participant whilst lying. So it's way better than chance, but definitely a work in progress. One other technology being used to detect deception is called FNIRS, standing for functional near-infrared spectroscopy. This is another non-invasive brain imaging technique that uses near-infrared light to penetrate the skull to measure the changing concentrations of oxygen levels of the blood in the brain. This interesting study presented results from a modest group of 44 participants who were randomized to engage or to not engage in a mock crime. They were instructed to conceal crime-related information forcing some of them to lie and assert their innocence. Based on the activity of the prefrontal cortex, the researchers could accurately distinguish the liars from the truth tellers 75% of the time, which is actually really good and demonstrates the feasibility of this technology. But again, these aren't actual criminals lying to keep themselves out of court or traitors on the BBC program trying to win money. So what about polygraphs, also known as lie detector tests? The theory is that lying is really stressful, which causes physiological responses such as an elevated heart rate, elevated blood pressure, and increased sweat levels. Whilst we can't see this with our eyes, a polygraph supposedly can. The accuracy of polygraph tests can vary widely, and the reports give accuracies of anything from 60 to 90%. Crucially, some individuals can train to control their physiological responses, helping to pass the test. Around the age of two to three, we all discover the ability to say things that are not true. To this day, there isn't a technology that can reliably discern when we're lying, which is why the traitors is so good. I don't want to get all philosophical, but lying itself isn't always black and white nuanced. Elements of something can be true. What someone would call a lie, someone else may just call partial exaggeration. Anyways, I'll leave you with a quote by Gloria Steinem. The truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.